Good morning, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Sharon Tafazzoli. I'm the uh, founder and CEO of Motion Metrics International out of Vancouver, BC. I'm also an associate member with Creative Destruction Lab, which over the last five years I've advised uh, more than uh, 500 tech companies out of Canada. And I'm an adjunct professor with the University of British Columbia Electrical and Computer Engineering Department, even though I haven't taught any course for more than 10 years. So. Um, so the title of my talk is Getting Sassy. And I uh, want to uh, use a motion metrics as an example of why technology companies should rethink traditional business models. And I'm actually here together with our uh, Director of Global Business Development, Derek Cooper, who is sitting back there, I believe. And uh, he helped put this presentation together. So in the QA period, if there are questions, I'll uh, get him engaged on the tough ones. So. All, right. <laughs> All right, a little about us. So, uh, disclaimer, I'm not a salesperson. So I'm not trying to sell anything, and I'm really bad at it. I, so essentially, I give you a background about motion metrics to get an idea why we are considering the SaaS model. And uh, I essentially want to get a conversation going here. Hopefully, this is the first time I'm making this particular presentation, and uh, we'll see well, how the engagement will happen. So motion metrics, we, are, uh, we have many systems of mining shovels around the world. And essentially, we, are a dis uh, we consider ourselves a disruptive mining technology company. So if there's a challenge in mining which hasn't been addressed, we try to come up with solutions. If problems are addressed, we are not interested. So we try to change the status quo with that. What we do, we use a combination of artificial intelligence, as of five years ago, and computer vision sensors to improve mine safety, efficiency, and productivity. And this kind of relates to the first talk uh, by Proudfoot. I really like the safety aspect. And the uh, Martex law that was mentioned uh, really kind of hit the spot for me because in my company, I've noticed that getting people to change and do things differently is one of the biggest challenges I have had. So I sympathize with that. Um, so our products are uh, distributed, meaning that we have an embedded component and the cloud component. And that makes things uh, uh, interesting in terms of the talk I want to give in, uh, in terms of the SaaS model. And so almost everything we offer has both hardware and software component. And the software has embedded and the cloud component, which I'll talk a little bit. And the reason for this talk is we are trying to transition, especially with our new offerings, towards a subscription-heavy model. And I want to see if I can get some inputs on that. I mean, this has been around uh, subscription model in other industries since 1990s, but uh, if the, um, uh, welcome input from the audience on that. So briefly, we put systems uh, on shovels, loaders. We have a new product with conveyor belt and the handheld device, essentially with the focus of using technology and machine vision cameras to make mining safer. Um, so our products are increasingly, as I mentioned, more distributed. If you talk to me, let's say more than five years ago, it was more embedded. So we have shovel metrics for mining shovels, which I'll talk a little bit about. Loader metrics for loaders. Portal metrics is portable device. And belt metrics on conveyor belts. We have a new product this year, truck metrics. Focus on trucks, and we are working on crusher and drone metrics later. So they connect to a cloud platform where we do both bring uh, you know, dashboards and reports, and we have AI, both on those embedded products and on the cloud. That, that can be accessed for um, people with authority. So shovel metrics, uh, so the whole idea about these initial slides is give you an idea of where, uh, where we are at as a tech company and why we are looking into SaaS model. So just imagine a big mining shovel. One of the key problems we looked at is the uh, missing tooth detection. So if a tooth breaks off, it's a big safety concern. People have lost their lives trying to get that tooth out of crusher. And we are pretty much the only or the main uh, supplier of a solution. We put a camera system, looks at the bucket, and if the artificial intelligence decides that the tooth is missing, an alarm goes off, and that prevents probably hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars of damage to the mine, and hopefully saves lives. But uh, then we started listening to industry, and we added measuring the size of the teeth, measuring the size of the rocks inside the bucket, doing payload of the, how much payload in terms of kilogram, and also proximity to prevent accidents. So those are the different modules. 
The key point is, you see that hardware there, which is an embedded computer, a touch screen display, radar, cameras. Those are the hardware components of our solution. So it's not purely software. And the hardware has to come from us because it has image acquisition things. It has a, a fairly powerful CPU for embedded computing. So it's not something off the shelf we can get. So I'll just give you some more ideas. Same camera, which looks at the bucket. We have an AI on the embedded system that takes good images of the bucket when it's full and sends it to the cloud, and we generate that on the cloud, which is the percentage passing curve. So essentially, we go from that image to this image. I'm going to replay that again. And that's all done with AI. AI decides the bucket is full on the embedded system, sends the picture to the cloud. On the cloud, we delineate the bucket. We use that for the scaling. And we have come up with an AI algorithm to separate that rock, that delineation. We are late comer into a rock fragmentation, but we believe we have the best technology in the world. So we are trying to deploy that. And then you can see peak curves and all that, which is very key to improve blasting and save tons of money and have less environmental impact. Loader metrics, similar thing for loaders. We use thermal cameras on loaders for various reasons. I'm not gonna go over that. And we have come up again with AI technology uh, we call it deep accuracy and thermal defect to detect what you are seeing here in a matter of almost one second of view you have of those teeth and then send an alarm, prevent a, bit, a big accident from in the mind. Portometrics is a tablet. You can hold it at safe distance. You don't need any scanning objects because it uses like human eyes two cameras. And either on the surface or on the underground, you can get rock distribution immediately. Again, it has both embedded component and the cloud component. A lot of AI in the new offering, we put it on the cloud. Belt metrics, we come up with high-res digital cameras with GPU capability, so 3D imaging and segmentation all on the device. Sits on the, with an the adjustable bracket on the belt sees the rocks, essentially we, rock, we sense every rock in 3D. So that's the concept here. And goes from that image to this. Just imagine every rock there is sensed in 3D. So, and truck metrics is the latest thing we are doing, big trials with large mining companies in uh, Australia going really well. So same stereo camera sitting on a big structure up to 20 meter high looking at the bucket, uh, looking at the tray of the truck to do size of the, uh, to see if there's any boulder, because boulders are a big problem. If you have a big rock of three meters going on the crusher, it's a big hassle. Uh, people familiar in mining, uh, they know that. And fragmentation analysis in terms of rock senses, similar to what we did in the shovel bucket, now we are doing on the tray. So we did the trials with the drone rather than that structure. It went very well and the, uh, Customers decided to move directly forward to have the structure in place and add the camera system. So again, we have hardware component, embedded computing, and cloud computing. So those are images that shows the truck that was with the drone. The truck passed by fast. The AI algorithm decided there's a truck, delineated the bucket, similar to the shovel, and did AI-based segmentation. And you can see the big, uh, uh, big rocks there. That particular truck is a well, uh, it's not a mining truck, it's a smaller one. We were running trials, but the proof of concept is there. So, uh, just, uh, so we supply this out of Vancouver. We have offices around the world, and it goes to shovels, loaders, and portable devices around the world. Uh, just in terms of the statistics, those are the number of countries, mines, 400 plus shovels and loaders, a small number of queries, and uh, 100 plus, 120 plus portable devices are using this. So, now I put things into perspective. So again, I wasn't trying to sell anything. Please don't buy our products. Just uh, listen. The concept is I want to make a case of why we are looking into SaaS model. So I, my talk really starts here. So the problem. First, we want to make sure maximum value is created for our client. And we want to stay close to our customers and be aware of our product performance at sites. We don't want to sell a product with a large price tag and not know what's happening. 
We would like to improve the product performance by analyzing live data from sites. I'll explore this more, but uh, that how in the age of AI, having that data and being able to use that to improve the product performance is key. And we want to have generated dashboards and reports. If the customers ask, oh, what's the value of your system? I want to immediately generate a report. So here's the value of the system. This is what we did in the last three months. Something that we haven't been able to do five plus years ago. It was very hard to do that. So product needs, it requires hardware components. So replace or repair of a faulty component is paramount. If this is not happening, the investment of the mine is going down the drain. Just getting no value. And as you know, mining is very tough. Shovels, shake. Somebody in the early years of motion metrics, I was trying to buy a camera from a space company, and they said nothing is harder than space. Well, I'll tell them, I have a mining shovel. It's shaking all the time. Every 50 seconds, the bucket hits the ground. Big shock is coming. There's rain, snow, uh, hot weather. And the guy said, holy cow, that's a tough environment. And honestly, it's worse than uh, the space applications that they were talking about. I was like, OK. So, uh, and any components we have put on the shovel, almost without any exception, has failed in the first week. So it's, uh, we take pride in that we have come up with solutions to put uh, cameras and embedded computers on the, these tough environments. So we want to make sure the client has the latest version of everything, software, on the embedded CPU, on the cloud. And, and similar to modern technology company, this is selfish. We are interested in recurring revenue, so I'm not going to hide it. This is also one reason. But it's, so why not have a win-win arrangement and uh, make everybody happy? So what's the traditional mindset of METS companies? METS, honestly, the term I first time heard it in Australia, in Future of Mining there. Uh, by the way, I really like uh, the events Future of Mining puts together. Great job to all the organizers. Uh, and so MITS, uh, I'm sure everybody knows, is mining equipment, technology, and services. Um, that term is mostly used in Australia. I haven't heard it in other places, but it's, it's nice. So essentially, it applies to us. And we are primarily hardware intensive. They rely on one-time sales of a bundled hardware and software as a system. So you give the bundle, charge the customer a significant amount of money with high profit margin, Include one year free software upgrade and nominal annual fee for cloud computing, small annual fee. And, and customers can continue to use the embedded system and the obsolete software or pay for some upgrades. So you're leaving a lot of things on the customer side, hoping they are going to get value, they're going to keep things managed, calibrated, and all that. And it's harder to stay close to the customer and system performance at sites. This is very hard. It has been difficult. And we felt bad about it because the customer paid money for the modules. But are they getting value? We don't know. That was the old uh, traditional mindset. And different customers will end up, this is a key point, they may end up with different versions of the system over time. And that becomes very hard to support. And, and they may not know that either. So what we are proposing, which is really nothing earth shattering, many people know about it. We just want to put a framework and start the conversation here. But uh, the picture is supposed to come at the end. I mixed up a little bit. So as I said, it's the first time I'm presenting. So just imagine you're not seeing that picture. So introduce, uh, we want to introduce lower cost to mines to adopt our system. So I want to reduce the initial purchase cost. Even though we put significant hardware and all that, we are telling mines, if uh, this brings value to you, we want to you paying us recurring uh, cost on that. We want to introduce a sizable annual subscription, so uh, more than that nominal fee, uh, much larger, and I will explain what. Because we both, both for the embedded software and the cloud software connectivity. We include a remote support person, which is the, support, the picture will come, just imagine the picture came here, who regularly reviews system performance, generates reports, and makes recommendations to the mine. So this way, we are staying close to the mine, and the value is really generated. We include one visit from our specialist to the mine to check everything on the shovels, on the loaders, embedded device, on the belt, on the truck, and all that, to make sure it's calibrated, they are getting value. And this will guarantee the latest and greatest version of both embedded and the cloud software. And that's key. Makes our job easier, and we make sure all the clients have almost the latest version, and everybody is uh, 
up to the, uh, to the best capacity of the product. And this, applies, this last one particularly applies to AI companies. We can, um, the good thing about AI, if you get data, you can bring it back, get humans to label it, it's called supervised uh, deep learning. You get them to label the bucket images, teeth, rocks, and all that in different environments. Then you overnight get the AI parameters updated on the uh, computational uh, cloud computer on the, uh, and then in the morning you come in, you have 10,000, 100,000 new parameters, you upload that to the system, and this suddenly performance is, was here, it goes up. So this is the first time in the last few years that I can go to the customer and say, hey, uh, the customer is not happy with the system performance. In a week, I can give them a new version of software which the result is better. You know what was in the old days? I should go beg our software engineers, the algorithm, can you improve this? Well, I'll see what I can do. Give me more money, more salary and all that. But now, you can use AI by better labeling and go back with new version of software. Essentially, same software, same structure, updated parameters, and we are living that today. Just give you an idea, this is, uh, we have adapted this from Google Uses, Google who uh, didn't make it to the talk. So they, they use this algorithm to detect if there's a cat in a video or there's a dog and all that. We use it to detect, uh, we take a picture of the bucket, we go through different layers of the AI network to decide if there's teeth, if there's bucket, if it's empty, everything is nice, and if the, all the teeth are healthy or one is missing, which I will show you the latest example of that. So we use the same stuff that the Googles and Facebooks of the world have it, but for mining applications. So the parameters I'm talking about is all those coefficients that you have to multiply the pixels of the images to get to. So quickly, just... Uh, SaaS has been around. It's a very product is licensed on a subscription fee. Uh, companies provide consistent value in return for recurring revenue. These are all just, this is what we know from other industries, aligns the needs of the customer with the company's uh, vision and goal. And because our products uh, include the rugged hardware component, uh, I was actually thinking not calling it SaaS because it's not just software, there may be other components and it's more called YAS. Intelligence as a service. So what I can give you is a basic version of the software without intelligence. You uh, subscribe to the intelligence and you get value. And that's intelligence on the embedded side and on the cloud. And it's not a one-time thing. We keep improving things. Uh, this I won't go just in the interest of time. Uh, very quickly, uh, there are some references uh, in terms of uh, 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 SaaS model. If you go traditionally on uh, on-premise offering where you have servers and stuff you try to install as opposed to a SaaS offering which is subscription and on the cloud. Honestly, five years ago if I talked about the cloud to a mining audience, I, they will kick me out, but now is uh, everybody happily using it with all the security it offers. Um, so this here comparison of how, uh, what is the model, how easy it is to deploy, and uh, essentially they were pricing and so forth. I won't go too much into that. I'm just saying that exists in terms of uh, service and support. Uh, the cloud-based offer, uh, what is the difference in training and also support you can do it because you're not staying close to the customer side so you know if they are getting the best results or not. And the reality is we are able to compare many sites with each other. Um, so, Essentially, as you know, in the other industry, lower initial acquisition costs, reduce need for dedicated IT at the mine, enables remote monitoring, improves data security is very important. So this, because we are not inventing it. The secure servers we have on AWS is, they are serving so many applications and uh, we haven't really encountered any problem. And a guaranteed immediate uh, rollout of updates and bug fixes. So for technology supplier, of course, there's predictable and quality revenue, but we have a stronger co customer relationship, easier system maintenance and updates, easy generation of reports and dashboards. And this, the other thing is, if mining is more adapted to this SaaS model, then we invite more technology companies to mining rather than all the school method of uh, sell me a software for a big capex cost, uh, capex, and then I, I'm not interested in the rest. So it's a win-win, we believe, and it's good for the company as well. Uh, so quickly, this has been around for Salesforce and NetSuite. I just 
fly over this slides, but GE, Siemens, HP, IBM, they all have had uh, uh, both the old model, perpetually licensed software, as well as uh, giving a solution bundle, but uh, SaaS allowed them to monetize expertise and IP and resulted in a stable recurring revenue stream. A quick case study on uh, Microsoft Office 365, which I believe most of you guys use, or Google. Uh, they, uh, Microsoft is known that they create a, a public company valued more than a trillion dollars. So, uh, uh, they create operating systems, servers, phones, and devices connected to IoT. They historically sold enterprise software as a perpetual license. I don't know, some people don't remember that, but that was the case up to not too many years ago. Uh, they have transitioned to subscription model per seat, per office, and in, uh, you know, introduced Office 365, and they, that helped them to rapidly grow and become the biggest technology company in the world and uh, their adoption went up. So uh, modular architecture, cloud-first mindset, invest in customer success. This last one is important. I, I left this slide. Top-down changes to product development, sales, marketing, and support. Everything changes. It's not like SaaS model is a way to charge a customer more. It's more of you have to have dedicated staff. You have to review the system performance. You have to stay close. You have to keep things up to date. Because you have connectivity, everything coming to dashboards, the dirty laundry is also coming out. So if the system is not providing value, it's going to come out. So you better make sure things are in good shape. Product development is also changes. Old method, you have a product, it's always being used, they have it there. Now you, you should be able to turn it on and off and so forth. So there's a cha changes, how do you market it? How do you make sure customers, they really like it and they will renew their subscription? Because now they have the freedom to say, oh, I subscribe one year, I didn't get value, I don't want to continue. So there's challenges on all sales, marketing, support side. Um, we started playing with this model in the last few years and we are getting, uh, subscri uh, our subscription revenue is growing steadily. Customers like it because they get value from system. Especially with new products, we are trying to do is more. Proactive support, updated AI networks for customers, which I touched upon. Happier customers, greater engagement, and staying connected to the customer. This is my last slide, so I would like to show you an example of a shovel missing this report. This was sent to the customer yesterday. So because they are on the SaaS model, we have access. This is a shovel in a copper mine in the US. September 2 at 9.26.51 p.m. You see all the teeth are good. Just a few minutes, uh, less than three minutes later, you see that left tooth is gone. You see that? On the, so the system AI detected that. We got a notification. The mine got notification themselves. We generated the report. The human operator looked at it and said, all is good. So we are trying to bring more AI to make the jobs of support staff easier rather than watch everything. And, but essentially, this created the value and prevented probably a big accident, which in the past, if uh, this didn't exist, and let's say the system wasn't calibrated, didn't get value. So this, is, this happened yesterday. Uh, the value is right there. It prevented probably a million dollar damage to the mine. And uh, that kind of concludes my talk. We are, have a booth upstairs. If you have more specific questions, come in. Uh, I have colleagues here and happy to answer any questions. Thank you.